Welcome everybody uh, to the town hall, uh, an opportunity to welcome the uh, new uh, GTU Dean. It's indeed uh, my pleasure to present Dr. Jennifer Davison as the next GTU Dean and Vice President for Academic Affairs. Let's see, when the hour is ringing a lot, right? <laughs> so, with the faculty appointment as John Dillenberger Professor of Theology. As most of you know, the internal search for the next GTU Dean kicked off last August under the capable, professional, and prudent leadership of the interim Dean Elizabeth Pena and participation of committee members representing various constituents of the larger GTU community. The search committee's work was completed on December 13th with a unanimous and enthusiastic recommendation of Dr. Jennifer Davison. And I wholeheartedly and immediately accepted the recommendation. The Council of Deans at its meeting on February 2nd gave its full confidence in Dr. Davison's ability to take on this role and was very pleased with the nomination and thought she was a great choice. The core doctoral faculty at their special meeting on February 4th also gave their overwhelmingly positive support for Dr. Davison's appointment. Then finally, the Board of Trustees at its meeting on February 10th gave its unanimous endorsement of her appointment. Now I would like to ask Interim Dean Elizabeth Pena, who has done a marvelous job the last two years, to say a few words before we turn to Dr. Davison. Thank you, Uriah. Uh, first, I want to start by thanking the search committee, uh, whose members so thoughtfully represented the breadth of the GTU consortium, and I see a few of them here. Um, so I'm just going to name them quickly. Uh, Majabin Dalla, Joshua Garcia, Ruth Myers, An Chan, David Vasquez-Levy, Dale Walker, and Colin Walmut. So thank you so much to everybody for your participation. I'd also like, like to thank those who, through their confidential applications for this position, demonstrated their commitment to the GTU and their interest in the leadership of our institution. Everyone's um, application was, was very much valued and appreciated. Uh, for me, it has been a real honor, albeit a very unexpected one, to have served as interim dean during this interim time. I'm very glad, I'm truly glad to have had the opportunity to be of service to the GTU. But while the role of Dean long-term is not for me, I care enormously about who occupies the post. So this past year and a half, I've worked with faculty, staff, students, and consortial colleagues in new ways. And what happens here, what happens next matters a great deal to me. Um, it's also true that when I revert to my previous role as director of the Center for the Arts and Religion, the new dean will be my boss. So I'm very invested in this process. So I'm just beyond thrilled to welcome Dr. Jennifer Davidson. Among her many wonderful qualities, she is an incisive listener. You know, she gets it. Uh, and it will, this will help her pick up steam very quickly. This is crucial in representing academic affairs at the GTU at this time. Uh, with everything that's going on, the Dean stands for the core of the GTU, which is the work of the faculty and students. And we need someone with the vision uh, and leadership and strength of Dr. Davidson to, to serve us all in this role. And I feel completely confident and excited um, about passing the baton to her. Uh, now, Dr. Davidson is gonna share with us some comments about her vision for the GTU. If you have questions you'd like to ask, please put them in the chat and I will call on you later um, as time allows. So without further ado, uh, Dean-elect Davidson. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
I extend my warmest greetings to everyone gathered here this evening. Thank you for your commitment to the community work and mission of the Graduate Theological Union. I wish to express my gratitude to President Uriah Kim for your words of affirmation and especially for the lively and robust vision that you have cultivated at the GTU. I am also profoundly grateful to Dean Elizabeth Pena and the members of the search committee who conducted the search process with great intentionality and deliberate integrity. You asked superb questions in the interview process and I have felt encouraged by your passionate commitment to the well-being of our school. And I want to also give thanks for my teachers mentors, family, and students from whom I have learned so much over these many years. I believe my mother is signed into our meeting this evening, and I am so deeply aware of the inexhaustible love for learning that my mom instilled in me. Indeed, it is a love that her parents modeled and instilled in her, even though they did not have the opportunity to complete high school because of economic pressures. Nonetheless, they were lifelong learners who devoted their lives to serving others. I am grateful for my teachers and mentors who encouraged curiosity and modeled liberative pedagogy. I am thankful for my colleagues and students at Berkeley School of Theology and all across the GTU who are passionately committed to justice, rooted in spirituality and tenacious hopefulness. I know that the purpose of our gathering this evening is so that we can meet and greet one another as I prepare to embark in this new role as Dean and Vice President for Academic Affairs. And as we do so, it feels especially important for me to say that I am here only because of the gifts, patience, prayers, and presence of others before me. It was 19 years ago that my marriage partner, Doug, and I, along with our then five-year-old son, Elliot, piled into our little Nissan Sentra and made a nine-day cross-country trek from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania to Berkeley, California, so I could pursue my PhD studies at this grand mythical place called the Graduate Theological Union. We chose the GTU because it was truly one of a kind place where I could pursue my studies surrounded by diverse religious traditions and informed by interdisciplinary commitments. We marveled at this astonishing place when we arrived, thrilled that our path had led us here. Now, nearly 20 years later, I still find the GTU to be a grand and storied place. And I have honestly not stopped marveling at this astonishing place with stellar centers, member schools, and affiliates, with world-class center directors and faculty, with outstanding and passionate students who are doing such good groundbreaking work and incisive scholarly work and all supported by a staff, administration, and board that are devoted to seeing this place and its people succeed and thrive. Tonight, as we gather, there is no question that higher education in general and higher education in theology and religious studies in particular face tremendous challenges many of which were brought into stark relief through the sudden and then continuous disruption from the COVID-19 pandemic. And as real as these challenges are, I am confident that the Graduate Theological Union is uniquely poised to meet the future with alacrity because of the already strong foundation and rich history of resiliency we embody as an academic community. 
the GTU's longstanding and groundbreaking commitments to interreligious, interdisciplinary, and ecumenical scholarship are our greatest strengths because the future of graduate education in theology and religious studies will be interdisciplinary and collaborative, interreligious and anti racist, trauma informed, holistic, and sustainable. And it will embody these approaches in a blend of online, hybrid, and in person modalities. Just as the global pandemic highlighted the reality that we are all connected, it also highlighted the way injustices are intertwined. Graduate education in theology and religious studies needs to be robustly interdisciplinary and needs to foster generative, creative, and agile partnerships across industries to research and offer creative solutions for the world's epidemics. I envision a future for higher education in theology and religious studies that will thrive when it partners with others on the leading edge of research, ideation, education, and solutions. The world's wisdom traditions, so many of them already present at the GTU through our academic centers, affiliates, and member schools are deep wells of living waters that sustain us in our ongoing work that addresses injustice and division in their many insidious forms. The work we do is soul bearing work. And when we confront entrenched problems, we often absorb the heart rending pain in the world. Now, two years into the pandemic, which has been an experience of collective trauma, we are also aware of the ways mental health has suffered for students and faculty alike. Therefore, the future of higher education in theology and religious studies will need to be trauma informed at every level of the institution, cultivating environments of safety, trust, choice, collaboration, and empowerment. Such learning environments are holistic. They focus on sustainability, foster empathy, and encourage deep learning. These commitments need to inform policies, campuses, workloads, and leadership at administrative and board levels. And they are conducive to human and planetary flourishing. I envision a future for the GTU rooted always in our shared history of radical collaboration and bold innovation that is complicated and daunting and hopeful and invigorating. I am excited and eager to work closely with center directors, faculty, students, administration, and staff as we shape our academic programs to meet our future with integrity and co-create a culture of sustainability where everyone at the GTU can thrive. Over the next several months, I will meet regularly with Dean Pena, who has committed to helping me get up to speed so I can start strongly in July. And I look forward to embarking on a listening tour with members of the community beginning in July so that I can hear from you about your passion, your pain points, and your hopes for the future of the Graduate Theological Union. By paying attention to healthy processes, good communication, and by keeping our mission, our why, front and center, together we will be able to live into our vision at the GTU to become an ecosystem of creativity, connection, and community, creating a borderless environment for learning and sharing wisdom from the world's many spiritual paths and traditions. The truth is, I love the GTU. I love the work we do together. I love the world that we are shaping through our questions, our research, and our work, but also through our everyday small interactions and conversations. Even these little moments matter. And when taken together, they create the world we live in. I am eager to serve you from this place of love 
so that you can do your great good work with a sense of joy and with the assurance that what you do matters. Thank you for being here this evening, and I look forward to our conversation tonight. Thank you. Does anyone have a, a question or a comment that they would like to share? Kate. Hi, Jen, Dr. Davidson. Thank you so much for those words and um, especially for sharing a bit about yourself and your own story. I loved hearing that. And um, when I read the blurb um, that was circulated about um, your work and what you're excited in and mentioned that you've been very involved in GT 2.0 initiatives. And I was just wondering what excites you the most about working towards GT 2.0? Yeah, great, great question. Um, I am really excited about the um, about working with the team that is the GTU right now, um, with stepping into um, the work of the centers along with the center directors and the faculty and um, and the leadership team. Um, uh, you know, sometimes working as a faculty member, and maybe this is this was exacerbated through the pandemic, but sometimes it feels a little bit lonely. Um, and I, I'm seeing this as an opportunity to, to really be working with a team um, and a team of people who are, uh, who are committed to interreligious and interdisciplinary work um, and who are a small and mighty group of mission-driven folks. Um, so uh, I'm... I, I just feel like we're gonna do kind of great things together and that there's a spirit of um, energy and hopefulness at the GTU uh, that we're gonna be able to, to build from. Yeah. Thank you. And now I would like to call on Thomas Katoy with a question. Yes, uh, thank you so much for your wonderful speech. You know, it was very invigorating, you know, and uh, I I'd like to ask you, what is your vision for our doctoral program? I mean, I know this is almost a cliche question and probably they ask you this question during your interviews, I don't know. But I'd like to hear what your thoughts are at this point. Um, one of the strengths of the GTU are the, the doctoral students that we attract, the students that we attract to this program. And, um, and the students who are motivated and who are passionate and who have a, a great interest in, um, in uh, asking difficult questions and breaking new ground um, and, and um, providing relevant scholarship to the world. Um, and so I'm really looking forward to um, opportunities to continue to work with the program that we have um, to continue to evaluate how we are doing with it, um, to continue to find ways to empower and um, embolden our students and our faculty. Um, and, uh, and um, sorry, to, uh, yeah, to, to, to do those things with, with, our, um, with our students um, and with our faculty. Okay, thank you. Anyone else you could put it in the chat or I'm, I'm gonna check the other, there are two screens here, so it's a little hard to see if you raise your hand. Ngema. Thank you. It's a great moment for me being here this evening and listening to you, Dr. Davidson. Um, from a student perspective, I'd like to find out from you, the usual thing is the other way around. Uh, we students will always say, you know, what do you have for us? How can you, how do you plan to support us? How do you, so I want to turn it around. As you begin your work, uh, you have lots of challenges, I guess, in your mind. You envisage lots of challenges. Um, how do you expect our students to collaborate with you to make your work um, uh, light, make your work good? What are your expectations from our students? 
Thank you for that question, Gembe. Uh, you know, I really am interested in this listening tour uh, at the beginning of when, when I come. And I would love to be able to meet with as many people as possible. Uh, and that, that would be a huge help to me, for me to hear from you um, and to, um, to be, for me to be able to listen to what your passions and interests are uh, and um, to, to see how you would like to work together, uh, not only with me, but with, uh, with everyone at the GTU. So I would say that that's, that is one um, quick way that uh, you all could be a help for me and to be honest with me in our conversations um, so that I really can hear um, you know, both what is good and hopeful and uh, positive, but also where the pain points are and where we can be doing better. Okay, thank you. And now, Mboy, another student question. Hey, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Pina. And I'm so excited for Dr. Davidson, uh, since I uh, took class of a uh, uh, seminar of interdisciplinarity with Dr. Holder. It's just so, uh, I'm, I'm so excited. And so I ask this question as both an international student and as a member of the um, Student Advisory Committee. Um, so as international students, we come as outsiders, definitely, like uh, by default, we are outsiders from the centers of power. And we don't even know where which strings to pull. We don't know what to, whom to talk to. And we are always there, just, you know, um, receive it as it comes and, and just, uh, and sometimes just smile through the pain. And one of the aspects about your appointment that just excites me is that to get it when we talk about the trauma. Now, talking about trauma, we live that. We live that, and I, I think of our brothers and sisters from Myanmar and, and whatever else, our personal stories and uh, pandemic. So how are you, um, if there's any way you have even started figuring it out, how do you hope to um, plan to incorporate us so that our perpetual outsideness, or just, you know, that alienness, and that's what they call us legally, we are aliens, and that's how actually how we feel, the, uh, being the stranger, the girl in Hebrew, how do you hope to, to somehow begin, not to solve our problems magically, but at least to help us begin being part of the GTU uh, in the long, short term and the long term? Thank you. Thank you, Mbui. Thank you for, for the question and uh, for the gifts that you bring here to the GTU. Um, and it, yeah, I think this is such a, a very important question. And you're exactly right to say, I, I have no illusion that I would be the one who would be coming in and solving um, a, a problem of this size, certainly not alone. This is one of the reasons why I, I am also highlighting the, um, the teamwork aspect of this. Um, this is the kind of thing that, that involves everybody. When I talk about uh, work being trauma-informed, this started when um, I started to do some research into how to have a trauma-informed graduate theological classroom. A lot of work had been done on trauma-informed classrooms that were in the K through 12 level, but not much work had been done at the graduate level, higher education, and then even less at the graduate level, and then even less at the graduate theological level. Uh, so that work I started to do in 2019, and one of the things that um, I uh, concluded through this process is that it's not enough to have a trauma-informed classroom, but that there needs to be a trauma-informed institution, and that means embodying some of the principles of being trauma-informed. So uh, one of the important things is that we don't want to re-traumatize people through the ways that we interact with them uh, unintentionally. Um, certainly not intentionally, but also unintentionally. And so it means really paying attention to some of these principles around uh, safety and collaboration and empowerment um, and um, making sure that people uh, have a way that they are feel in control of their own circumstances uh, in as much as that is possible. So, so that is one of the commitments that I bring to this role um, is to find a way to cultivate uh, this intentionality um, throughout the whole institution from the board through the administration staff 
faculty and students. Uh, and I, I see that as one way that we can go about doing this, this work together. Thank you. And now I'm gonna to turn to Joshua Garcia with a question. Uh, hi, thank you, um, Dean Pena. Uh, congratulations, and um, I look forward to working with you, um, Professor Davidson. Uh, my question uh, is about uh, interdisciplinarity. Uh, that's something that's such a great, uh, a very valuable part of um, the program here at the GTU. It is indeed what drew me to study here. Um, I am curious, and if you, uh, you could speak more to um, how you envision enabling and encouraging students uh, to pursue uh, interdisciplinarity um, in their studies. Mm -hmm. As someone who is all, uh, doing that, uh, I'm very um, uh, invested in uh, that. So thank you. Yeah, great. Thank you, Joshua. Um, I think our interdisciplinary seminar um, is uh, designed to, um, when our students come in, we are uh, always putting uh, interdisciplinary work uh, at the forefront of what our students are working on through that, through that process. Um, and, um, you know, I think, I think on some level, um, uh, one of the reasons I'm, I talk about our, our history and who we already are, um, I think that is something we are doing well. And I want to affirm that, that I feel as though we are doing that well, uh, that we have made a commitment to that with our newer PhD commitment uh, or our newer PhD curriculum, and that we, are, um, that we are seeking to embody that with our students. Um, and um, so I, I, think that's, I think that is one particular way uh, and um, by encouraging um, uh, kind of keeping these checkpoints along the way in the, in the academic program when students are doing uh, your comprehensive exams and when you are putting together your dissertation proposals that we are particularly looking at um, where are the interdisciplinary aspects of the work that you are doing. Um, so I, I think those are um, some primary ways. Thank you. Let's see, anyone else have a comment or a question? I'm scanning. Oh, uh, yeah. Jim Brenman. Oh, you're, I think you're muted there, Jim. Doesn't look like you are, but there's no sound. How about now? Yes, very good. My apologies. Um, as you can imagine, um, we're a little bittersweet here at, it's bittersweet here at BST, but I do wanna go on record to say, uh, I do think the choice was, uh, it's a wonderful choice. Jennifer Davidson, you've done such a marvelous job. Anyone who has watched her work or studied under her, know that she's a constant learner, especially matters of pedagogy, new, new modalities, always try with an eye of expanding uh, and democratizing our learning such that uh, moving us away from, uh, you know, the, 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 um, the uh, sage on the stage, if you will, and proficiency-based education, what do our students bring to the task? And she's at the forefront, I think, of new pedagogies. And, and just look at her CV, all the things that she can, she's constantly learning new ways of doing things. So I just wanna say, I think she is a gift to the GTU and I'm so uh, proud of her work and, and what she will do at the GTU. And, uh, and she's a great poet too, as you know. So I just wanna end by saying, 
something from our uh, common favorite poet Rumi, who's, and part of me regrets him saying, you know, his famous poem that says, say yes quickly, <laughs> uh, forget your life, say God is great, get up, reach your long hand out to another door beyond where we are, say yes quickly. If you know, you've known it from the beginning of the universe. So I say that with a blessing from all of us at BST for the work that you will do to carry on the marvelous work you've done for us here. And I look forward to many years of working with you into the future. Thank you, President Brenneman. That, uh, that really encourages me and um, I, I deeply appreciate the words and the blessing. Thank you so much. My, my opportunity to have um, taught at BST for the last 15 years has been a tremendous gift to me. And uh, the students and um, the, the, um, the whole organization has um, profoundly shaped me and who I am as a scholar um, to have the opportunity to spend that many years teaching at a, a place that is so thoroughly intercultural at every level of the institution um, has, uh, has really created me as the scholar that I am. I wouldn't be who I am if it weren't for um, that particular school. And so I'm, I'm so glad that I have had that very strong foundation and um, I'm excited about what is ahead for, um, for that school uh, along with um, all of the GTU schools. Thanks. I would just like to also say thank you, um, Jim, for that just lovely testimonial. I don't know how we could really get better. And we're certainly so grateful to you and to everyone at BST for all the mentorship and collegiality that you've obviously supported Dr. Davidson with um, throughout, throughout the years and um, are happy, thrilled to be welcoming her to this new role in the consortium. And um, you know, I just want to thank you and everybody at BST a lot for everything that you've done and for your support, even though you're, as you say, it's bittersweet, you know, so I, we appreciate that greatly. You could write in the chat or flag me down if you have something you'd like to ask or share. Can I check my screens? Oh, there's a raised hand. Anita. Oh, sorry. Hi there, it's Anita. Anita, excuse me. Trying to log on to my computer. I couldn't figure out how to do that. I was driving. Congratulations, Dr. Davidson. Um, <laughs> I am just so very excited. I was also going to speak about your pedagogical style and how much it has influenced me as one of your longtime students. And um, I'm, I'm working in a university now as I wrap up my dissertation, haha. <laughs> and, and one of the things that we're talking about here is trying to find a, a pedagogical style that reflects um, not only each professor's individuality, but also embraces the culture of the, of the institution. And I think as a student that Dr. Davidson, your style of both liberative and contemplative uh, teaching uh, embraces um, all of what GTU is and what it claims to be and what it will be. And so I just thank you as someone who's been sort of working underneath you for quite some time now. Congratulations. I look forward to engaging with you in this new role. Thank you, Anita. Um, your words really mean so much to me. I, I really appreciate it a lot. And uh, I am excited about the work that you are doing and the dissertation that you are completing. Uh, and um, one of the greatest joys uh, of being here at the GTU just this morning, I, I had a dissertation, I chaired another dissertation defense and we minted another brand new PhD. 
And uh, it's just, you know, that is so much the joy of this work and, um, and seeing uh, our PhD students um, go through the program with all of your gifts and uh, insights and then to uh, be moving out in the world. What a, what a robust um, uh, group of not only students but alum that we have and I'm excited to uh, connect with folks at, at all of those levels and um, seeing how we can continue to draw in your expertise for years to come as well as uh, others in the community. Thank you. There's a comment here from Dr. Flesher who has added. Uh... Yes. Um, she says, Dr. Flesher says uh, she cannot turn on her camera. She's suspicious it has something to do with divine intervention. I empathize today with the bittersweet moment we are in at BST. I look forward to the days ahead as Dr. Davidson leads us to the next level in the GTU. I always wish to remind Dr. Davidson, I still have a set of photos that can come out at any time if I should need them. So that's, <laughs> thank you that for that very important information, Leanne, we'll, we'll keep that. <laughs> yes, Dean Flesher literally has a photo of my dirty laundry uh, from when we, when we traveled to uh, Rwanda together a couple of years ago and I had to do my laundry and had to hang every, everything. I, it was actually my clean laundry. But it's uh, it's all hanging on a, a line outside of the place where we were staying. <laughs> That's great. Okay, I'm going to take another look around the screen. So um, before we head toward um, closing, I mean, I'm sure, uh, you know, of course, we're going to have many more opportunities to get to know Dr. Davidson in the course of her, the, our transition. And then, of course, once she's dean. So this is just the very beginning of this new kind of relationship that we'll all have with her. But um, is there anything else you would like to say, uh, Dr. Davidson, before we head toward closing? Yeah, you know, I keep thinking about the question that um, that that Thomas asked about the vision for the PhD program. I'm not happy with the way that I answered it. Um, I have to admit, I'm nervous. Okay, see you next. Yeah, this is a this is a bit of a nerve wracking experience. Um, and um, but you know, I, I want to say that first of all, I don't feel like the PhD program needs a radical revisioning. I think that's part of what part of what I was trying to say. Um, however, I do think that there are um, great opportunities for us um, in with the PhD program in the future. And I think one of the ways that we are stretched is um, particularly around um, faculty of color at the GTU and interreligious faculty resources at the GTU. So one of our challenges when we were teaching IES is um, was trying to have a faculty um, in enough faculty in IDS who represent the diversity uh, across the GTU, not only um, not only like not only in this area, but among our students as well. So that when our students come, they see people who are like them. Um, and that makes such a, a difference. And yet we're, we're also challenged because we, we don't have a lot of people um, already here and we don't want to, uh, we don't want to overburden the people that we do have here who are frankly already overburdened. So I think that is one area in for the PhD program that I would love to see us think about um, how can we continue to um, place that as a, a very strong emphasis in what in what we um, are doing and place that as a goal. Uh, so I would love to see um, an opportunity where we would have more indigenous 
um, religions and traditions represented, uh, more uh, Latino, Latinx um, traditions, womanist, Black Africana traditions represented, um, and, uh, and and so and and then also you know we're we're in the midst of reviewing our department seminars, so we want to make sure that our course syllabi. Um, also represents um, and reflects this diversity um, so that students don't have to always climb over stuff in order to get to the work that they most want to do. Um, one of the strengths that we have as an institution, as I was trying to say, with the students that we attract is truly the unique and groundbreaking work that our students do. That often means that our students are among the first people doing that work. So that represents an additional challenge about how we can equip students who are so much on the leading edge of scholarship, um, who, are, who are almost inevitably going to encounter a dearth of resources. So we want to encourage people to be on that leading edge and, and provide them with a PhD program that equips them at the leading edge um, and, and also helps them realize that, that that's where they are. So how can they do this work as among the first to do this work uh, and go out feeling encouraged and emboldened by that and not kind of afraid that they're going to be stepping on toes or uh, those kinds of things. So I think that I think that might say a little bit better um, uh, the kind of vision I have for a strong PhD program. Yeah, thank you so much for your words. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, and you're certainly getting a lot of affirmation in, in the comments, in the chat. And I would say, I think it's pretty obvious why I'm so confident and so happy to be passing the baton to you when we're gonna, the GT is gonna be in um, just fantastic hands. I have you know, no doubt and complete confidence and very excited about, about everything that's upcoming. And I'm sure everyone here and others uh, join me in that sentiment. Um, so just to close off our, our meeting today, I want to um, turn it over to Associate Dean Arthur Holder just for a few closing words. Wow, thanks so much, Elizabeth, for giving me this, uh, this opportunity. Um, Jennifer, you know, there are a, a, a lot of people, everybody here uh, is enthusiastic and supportive and excited for you. And there are a couple of us Uriah, Kim, and myself, at least, uh, who remember being in your shoes at, at this time. Uh, for me, it was exactly 20 years ago this month that I found out I was going to be the dean of the GTU, coming after 16 years of teaching at a member school here at CDSP. And we were getting ready to celebrate the 40th anniversary of the GTU. Now in 2022, you come into this position having been at BST for 15 years. So I beat you by one, but then you were here as a student before that. So, okay, you beat me by four uh, <laughs> or so. Um, and we're getting ready to celebrate the 60th anniversary of the GTU. So I look back at that the last 20 years and think of how much has changed here at the GTU, how much has changed in higher education in the world. Uh, but I also think of how much is the same. And you, I thought, just picked it up in your, um, in your vision statement there, the, the collaboration, the excitement, the spirit of adventure, of um, innovation, flexibility, and bringing people together across all kinds of uh, differences into this common purpose. And that stays the same. And the other thing I feel sure will stay the same for you as I had, as I know Uriah had, and our predecessors as deans uh, before us, the support and the amazing energy that comes from the staff, the, the faculty, the students, the board, 
of this institution. Um, you've got the greatest job in the world coming uh, ahead of you. And uh, we all look forward to seeing what you will do with that. And we pledge ourselves to help you in every way that we can. Yay, Jennifer. Thank you. Thank you so much, Arthur. I, I would just add that at my orientation, which I didn't realize was so soon into the start of your um, tenure as dean, you uh, quoted T.S. Eliot to us, a line from T.S. Eliot that said, um, teach us to care, teach us not to care, teach us to sit still. Uh, and that um, that stayed with me. Um, I wrote it down and posted it at a place where I would see it often, and it continues to speak to me and feed me. Um, we we care, and uh, we we can't carry the whole burden all the time, uh, and we can sit still uh, and um, and uh, be present to what we have before us. So thank you. And thank you to everyone again for being here. I appreciate it so much. Thank you everyone for coming. More good stuff to come. Good things ahead. Good things ahead. Good night, everybody.